happy you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. You can find out much more about the Retirement Education Foundation on their website. Be sure to search for Retirement Education Foundation. Like the page and you'll be clued into everything Kirk and Paul are doing how they're helping people just like you prepare for retirement. Part of preparing for retirement, Kirk and Paul, is making sure you have that nest egg built up so you have income, steady income throughout your retirement years. And there are a a lot of tools to get that, right? We can look at stocks, at bonds. I want to focus on bonds today and what exactly a bond is, how they're priced, and what investors need to know about bonds, especially in this current climate. Kirk and Paul, welcome to the show. Help us understand bonds today. Well, I, I think first we need to make sure we understand what a bond is, right? I'm not sure everyone does. I mean, it, it's, it's not complicated. It's simply an IOU, right? You're lending money to an institution, a municipality, the government for a period of time. And during that period of time, you're lending them money. They're paying you interest. They're paying you a coupon. They're paying you interest back with the intent that when the maturity comes up, when that money is due that pay you back, that they'll be able to pay you back your money. So a great example, it's supposed to be a risk-free investment, is a 10-year treasury, Paul, where you're lending money to the U.S. government for 10 years, and for 10 years, they're paying you interest every year. Historically, it's been about 6% is what they would pay you per year, and then after 10 years, they would give you your money back. And I, I started with that because from there, we really have, can better understand some of the challenges people are facing with bonds as a tool for retirement and how the behavior of these bonds are a little bit different than I think a lot of people in our industry thought they would behave when we have vol- market volatility. Yeah, you know, I, I love this show because I really think that, you know, I, I talk to people all, all the time and there's a lot of anxiety out there about the future. And, you know, if you're at that point in life where you're thinking about at some point retiring in the next five to 10 years, right, you want to make sure your money's protected. And this is an important topic because I think our industry is promoted you know, as you get closer, this sort of balanced portfolio, moving a little money more into bonds as we get older as a way to protect you. And I know you feel this way. One of my great worries is there's a lot of people out there who are thinking that they're protected because their target dated funds, their investments have slowly moved more to bonds and they're thinking they're okay. And I hate to bring the news to them, but they're going to hear in this show. It's not as, it's not as simple as, as I think most people think it is. Yeah, the old playbook isn't going to work anymore, Paul. I mean, yet our industry is still promoting that 60, 40, 60 stocks, 40 bonds, or as you get older, 40 stocks, 60 bonds. That playbook doesn't play anymore. It's not going to work. And we could start with the basics, Paul. The basic is, historically speaking, the 10-year treasury has been averaging 10%. Today, you're going to get less than 1% per year on your to lend the US government your money for 10 years. 1% less than 1%. That isn't a retirement plan. It's not going to work. So we are 4 5% below historical averages on bonds across the board and if that's the case then I mean they look they call it the war on seniors and savers for a reason right now. These low interest rate environments are killing are destroying yeah are destroying our industry really because they don't know what to do. Right. They don't right. want a plan, right? right I mean, right. our whole industry isn't designed to do planning. They're supposed to give you a asset allocation. Here's your portfolio and protect your principal, take your 4% out and you're good. Right. And that's why, honestly, we started to see this problem 10 years ago when we started teaching this course. It's about understanding what drives performance and how you can have a, an effective retirement plan. And it's what we do when we teach our classes. And we teach these classes every couple of weeks now at all the major universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State University, Oakland University. We also teach in our learning center here in Livonia. And we're also streaming it live right now with the COVID epidemic. So uh, we are starting to do some small groups, but this is a seven hour course teaching you how to build your own retirement plan. Tuition's $29, and we donate that tuition to charity. We just want you to come to this course knowing it's an educational event for you to learn how to retire. Nothing's going to be sold to you. So I would encourage you to register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. We're glad you're with us here on the Retirement Education Hour. You certainly can 
get registered either way. Very simple. If you're online, you can go to that website, retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Talking about bonds today on the show, what a bond is, how they're priced, and also understanding how to use them, if you should use them. Yeah. Kirk and Paul, what else should we know right off the bat here as we start our conversation on bonds? Well, I, I think, Paul, it's important. One of the things that we had a discussion at the beginning of the COVID virus on what what should we do with our classes, our educational courses? Look, our, our clients are fine. No one panicked. They were this is part of built out in their plan. So no one no one panicked. But we knew that there would be a lot of anxiety as the market was crashing. People weren't sure what to do, and there's a lot of people who made mistakes. And we, that's why we've we've taken this COVID crisis, and we really re- recreated our class so that we could stream it live so people could continue to get the education they need because, look, bonds are a very, very difficult place to be in right now. They're dangerous, and as interest rates rise, they're going to continue to be base dangerous as we continue to have downgrades from uh, from major corporations – and companies taking on greater amount of debt, we're seeing tremendous amount of downgrades. Bonds is a scary place, and unfortunately, that is the reflex for most in our industry to go to when there's problems. When we have volatility, the reflexes go into bonds, and it's the exact wrong place and thing to do right now. And that's why we, one of the major reasons we committed to keep teaching these classes, Paul. It is. It is. And, and I think, you know, in the next segment, I think that's a great place to go. You, you brought a couple of things I think we have to drill down into. Let's just remind people about the class. So, you know, as you said earlier, we teach this class. We're teaching it now it's every couple of weeks. We've been streaming it because of the, the pandemic. We're starting slowly to have these hybrid classes where we have a few people attend and you can still stream in if you want to. Uh, it's twenty nine dollars to attend the class. It's a seven hour class. It's a 200-page textbook. It costs $29 to attend. And in the end, we, are, we will teach you how to build a retirement plan. If you want to come to the class, we would encourage you to go to retirementplanningedu.com, and you can learn about the class. You can see the syllabus. You can read about the instructors. You can register online. That's retirementplanningedu.com or call 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981, and you can register when you call. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Always a pleasure to be alongside Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. They are financial instructors, and this is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. We're discussing bonds today here on the show, and maybe maybe you're like me. You're wondering, okay, I've heard about bonds, obviously, but I don't understand how they should be part of my investment mix. I don't understand how to use them to my advantage for retirement planning. And Kirk and Paul, that's why you are here. You're going to give us some more insights on bonds and and their uses. And I wonder, just maybe a very basic question, but one you probably get a lot. Where do you buy bonds? How do you buy bonds? Well, it's interesting. When we teach our class, one of the first questions I like to talk, when we get into the section about bonds is, how many people here actually own individual bonds and I should say individual, either municipal bonds or corporate bonds, not those I bonds or E bonds, municipal or corporate bonds. And very rarely do people raise their hand owning individual bonds because candidly bonds, it's just, most of you own your bonds in your bond funds. If you don't have a quarter of a million dollars just to allocate to own individual bonds, you can't get the diversification in what we call the lot sizes to justify doing it. So most of you by professionals and yourself as you're investing, you've always bought your bonds within a bond fund. And frankly, I'm not sure people realize they don't own the individual bond. They own a bond fund and that fund owns a bond. So therefore they don't realize because it's often said when we talk about all the risks associated with bonds is that, you know, if this happens, this happens you can lose money from this. And everyone says, well, I'll just hold it to maturity. Well, if you don't own the individual bond, you can't hold it to maturity. And there are very, very few bonds that are issued 
originally that are held until maturity. Bonds are being bought and sold all day long on a secondary market. Most bond funds are bought and sold within a year or two from when they purchase them. They don't hold them the 10, 12, 15, 25 years or the seven years. They're bought and sold constantly. And the pricing of how those bonds are bought and sold are dependent on three variables. It's interest rates, credit quality, and something called duration risk. And, uh, you know, I just caution people. I know some people will try to do this themselves and go out and purchase their own individual bonds, and they are not going to get bonds at best pricing. They are going to make mistakes. This is really a difficult, different market, and you typically don't see an equity stock manager and a bond manager all in one. They are separate because they are very different strategies. Yeah, you know, actually, I I, I have a horror story of a client who – Took a took a lump sum from a pension, seven hundred thousand dollars, and they Horrible. bought five individual. This gets to the heart of what you just said. Yeah. Individual bonds, three of them were junk bonds, and he lost all the money. You talk about diversification. Three, five bonds. Yeah. Seven three of them are junk. Three, three, three have gone bankrupt, which is high yield, just right? That's right. So when he bought it, I'm sure he didn't realize they were junk. They didn't he, call them junk. No, they call them high yield. Exactly. They, they're junk stats, which we're, we're going to educate. We're going to explain about bonds. But I think really for the purpose of all of you who are listening to this show, you're listening to the show not to understand every little individual investment. It's more about what's the most effective way to construct, manage your portfolios in retirement to get the outcome you want. And unfortunately, our industry is still stuck in an old 60-40 playbook. And I just think baby boomers are going to get crushed. I mean, we're not, it, we're, we're not exaggerating when we're saying there's a war on seniors and savers. And that, that war will end. But the problem with, it, with the, when the war ends and the interest rates start to go up, Paul, people are going to lose a tremendous amount of money in bonds. Bonds don't have the safety that they're often promoted and people have taught, been taught that they are. So I think we have to, you, you said something that's really important and you alluded to it a minute ago. The pricing of bonds, the value of those bonds are related to interest rates, right? And you just made a comment. When interest rates go up, people are going to get crushed. They're going to get crushed because the value of your bonds, the price of those bonds actually are inverted. They, are, they, they go down when interest rates go up. And, and what kind of interest rate environment are we in right now? We're in the lowest we've ever been in. There's only one place they're going to go. So when they go up, the value of those bonds within those bond funds are going to go down. And that's, that's what you mean when you say people are going to get crushed. They right? are. They're going to really get hurt. I, I don't see a way in the next 20 years for people to make anything in their bond funds. Because we know over the last 30 years, 50% of all the money you made in your bonds, I know this is confusing, folks. I, I'm telling you, bonds are a little bit of voodoo. It's really technical. But 50% of what you made in your bonds over the last 30 years wasn't the interest from your bonds. I mean, just the interest from your bonds. It was the appreciation of the value of your bonds, meaning the bonds that you owned inside those bond funds, when they sold them, they were making money to sell them and you earned interest. So half of what you made was the interest from the bonds. The other half was them buying, in, I'm sorry, selling those bonds. And when they were selling those bonds, as interest rates were falling, if you have a bond that is paying a higher interest rate, Someone else's, it's a more desirable bond to own, right? Maybe explain that, Paul, yeah, very that, quickly. I, I thought that was actually awesome. But so, with, so if you own within your bond fund a bond that's paying a certain interest rate and interest rates start going down, if someone wants to go buy that same bond, they're going to get a less interest rate. If you're sitting on one that has a higher interest rate and you go to sell it, everyone wants to buy it. So you can sell it at you can sell for a profit. Yes. It's appreciated because now people want your bond because it's paying a higher interest rate than the current bond is paying. And 50% of everything we've made over the last 30 years is from the appreciation of the bond. So what's that mean when interest rates go up? It means 50% you're going to lose money. That's right. All you're going to you're going to only make money on the interest and you're going to lose some of the profits because as interest rates go up and the bond funds it, it, maybe I don't know if we have time but just know that if you own a bond fund they can't hold that bond till maturity. It's not possible. 
every bond in that bond fund is being bought and sold throughout the years as they own that bo- uh, as they manage that bond. And when they go to sell a bond, if interest rates have gone up, that bond's going to be worth less. You're going to lose money. And so this is we spend a long a fair amount of time on this topic in our classes and it's 7 hours of classroom time. We're going through a 200-page textbook. It's $29 to attend, and we donate the, your tuition to charity. I would highly encourage you. To, you need to understand what drives performance in retirement. It's not the investments you choose. It's when you take your income and from where. So register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. Much more with Kirk and Paul right after this. I want to tell you a little bit more about Kirk and Paul. Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, they are financial instructors. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation, and you can learn a lot about that at their Facebook page. Just search Retirement Education Foundation, and you'll be in touch with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. We're very glad you've tuned in. For the Retirement Education Hour, I'm Megan Mozak. Our focus today is bonds. And I wonder, Kirk and Paul, why is this topic so important for people right on the threshold of retirement? It's just it's just so important and it's so hard to explain. But there is a conventional wisdom to building and designing and managing people's retirements. And that conventional wisdom is you get older, your percentage that whoever's helping you or whatever portfolio you're invested in, as you get older, they are going to shift into owning a greater percentage of bonds and a lesser percentage of equities. And while maybe over the 30 years from the mid eighties until the, well, let's see, 85, 95, 2005, 2015. Yeah, it's exactly 30 years, that 30 year period. While that playbook probably made a lot of sense it is not going to make sense for the next 20 to 30 years. And candidly, it didn't make sense the prior 20 to 30 years when we look at performance and how bonds have reacted. So what what, what you have is sort of a perfect storm of an industry. Our industry, look, at the end of the day, their core, um, their core objective is to make money. I, I'm sorry to say they're a business. They're trying to make money and making money. The best way to make money is scale, scale, building efficiencies and trying to simplify processes so that they can meet as many people as possible and sell as much as possible. So the more cookie cutter, generic strategies, playbooks that they can follow, it's easier for them to train the newer people that's coming into the industry. It's easier for them to take on more clients. And I'm just, I know, Paul, this is something that's really been important to us for a long time. We're really concerned that most people in retirement think that what is going to drive their performance in retirement, whether it's trying to leave as much money as possible to try to generate as much growth as possible or as much income as possible, or whether it's just whether or not to outlive our money, whatever our objective is. However you measure performance, they think what's going to drive that performance is the investment strategies, and it's not. Yeah. The bonds, the stocks, that's not what's going to drive performance. And in fact, I think the greater the bond allocation, the worse your performance is going to be, and it's dangerous. It is. You know, and Paul, you got to tell them what drives performance, though. We can't just make that blanket <laughs> statement. What drives performance? It's all about asset allocation. And? Income planning. When do I take income from which accounts? That's it. It's all right. income planning, tax planning. The investments is the easiest part. Yeah, no, it is. It, it is. And, and you know, you, you're, you're talking about, Megan asked, I thought, you know, in the beginning, the question of why are we talking about this? Why is it such a big deal? And, and, and you mentioned this sort of the old playbook. And, you know, I, I think part of the challenge is, is bonds historically have been thought of as a safe haven, right? I mean, it, it, right, that's that i my i remember my father when i was a kid talked about bonds as being a safe haven and i think you know and and part of the reason for that is there's always been this perception that the value of bonds are negatively correlated to the value of equities so the thought is well when equities are getting crushed 
money's good. People are going to go to bonds because it's safe. So let's go to bonds. And, and there's been periods in our history that they were negatively correlated, but in the last two or three years, they actually have been positively correlated, right? So as equities have been getting crushed, bonds are getting crushed. So everybody who's thinking they have half their money in bonds because they're safe, guess what? If you look at those bond values, you're going to see those bond funds that got crushed as well, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, this idea that they're negatively correlated is, uh, you know, it, it applied over that 30-year period, but there's many times in our history that they have performed identical more times than than not. Right. But yet this is still the playbook that's being utilized. Right. I promise you a lot of our listeners here, when we went, the market started going crazy, their their advisors took them into bonds, mm-hmm. which, oops, that was a pretty bad mistake because they missed the recovery, right. which we are b- almost back to where we started. And they're stuck in bonds in the lowest interest rate environment. You can't do anything but lose money in bonds over the next 20 years. I mean, you have to be such a skilled bond trader, and it can't be done in a bond fund. Look, in your bond funds, you are restricted. The manager of that bond fund has certain parameters they must follow. That's what the disclosures, the prospectus is about. So no matter what their belief and what they should be investing in and how and when and why, their hands are tied because they have issued this bond fund with these rules of engagement. There's a prospectus. They can't vary from that. So whatever the strategy was when they created it is the strategy they're going to have to follow throughout. So the only way to manage you, you as an individual, manage your bonds is you're going to have to jump from different manager to different manager to different strategy if you're advanced enough to do that. If you th- if you're thinking if you invested in a bond fund thinking you had somebody managing your money to get the best outcomes for your investment, well, that that that's not what is going to happen. That's not what happens with bonds because they have to stay within the parameters in terms of how many average years of till maturity, the credit quality, the duration risk. They have to stay within these parameters and. The interest rate environment and credit quality environment shifts so frequently to do well in bonds. You have to be a skilled bond manager, fixed income manager, and you have to use individual bonds. In the next 20 years, you guys, please hear us. Come to the class so you can learn how to build a conservative retirement plan. It's not bonds. You are going to lose. You are going to absolutely lose If your retirement plan is to overweight into bonds, it's not going to work over the next 20 years. We can get up on our top of our hill screaming, and that's what I'm doing right now. I hope you're hearing us. And that's the importance of education and understanding what the most effective way to build a retirement plan is. It's not the investment you choose. It's when you're taking money from which accounts at what age. And so come to our seven-hour course. It's a 200-page textbook. We're teaching at all the major universities. We're starting to do small groups, and we're streaming it live so you can stay at home if you're still concerned about the virus. It's $29 to attend. The tuition goes to charity. We don't keep that. It goes straight to charity. If you'd like to register, you can go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. And we're back with much more here on the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak here with financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. You can learn more at their Facebook page. Just search for Retirement Education Foundation. We're talking about bonds today here on the program. And we talked about interest rates. If those go up, well, that's a risk to retirement. What if interest rates don't go up? Does that mean there are no other risks out there, Kirk and Paul? Well, that was really a good segue. Uh, honestly, Megan, that was pretty, very well stated. So clearly you're learning from what we're talking about. But um, And, and I want to just make sure we're clear. So, you no, know, there are other risks, and we're going to talk about them. But I want to make sure, I want to make this as simple as possible. You need to think about whatever interest rates are, if interest rates go down, the value of the bonds you own will go up. And then if interest rates go up, the values of the bonds that you own currently will go down. So that's 
the first biggest risk. If you are in a camp that you think over the next 20 years, interest rates will eventually go up, then your bonds that you own right now are going to go down in value. Simple as that. The second risk is uh, credit quality. The credit quality of your bonds, and what is credit quality? It means when you're lending money to anybody, what is the, what is the likelihood of that person, that municipality, that company, the corporation, whoever you're lending money to, what is the likelihood that they're going to be able to pay you back your money at maturity, whatever the term is? It's kind of like you've got two friends. One friend you know, is very financially stable, might have had an emergency unexpected, but you're confident that they're going to be able to pay you back. So you would rate that friend a AAA rating. <laughs> if you lend them $1,000, they're going to pay you back within five years at $1,000 you lent them. Then you can have the friend that every time you turn around, they're borrowing money from somebody and no one's getting paid back. We would call that a high-yield junk friend <laughs> who, if you give them $1,000, you know they'll be back next month asking for two more $1,000. That's less likely to pay you back. Same thing when you're lending money to the companies and municipalities. If they're likely to be able to pay you back, uh, you're going to have the higher rating. So the ratings go like this. AAA is the best quality, the most likely to pay you back. Then it goes to double A, single A, triple B, double B, single B, and please don't go any further than that. So, Paul, I think one of the more interesting things that's come out of this COVID crisis is the behavior of the Fed and the long-term impact of the behavior of the Fed, specifically in the bond space, and how many companies have gotten downgraded because of the their so much less likely to be able to pay people back the money that they've been lent. Right, right. First of all, you've never used that analogy before, yep. and I loved it. And I'm Thank thinking you. about my friends. And I'm thinking, <laughs> so okay, do I have any to? junk friends or do I have investment-grade friends? <laughs> but <laughs> if, if we can, for a moment, draw a line in the sand between a junk friend and a good friend, yep. it would be between triple B and double B, right? So really good. triple B is the, is the lowest it's the bottom of the of the good friends, yep. and double B is where they start becoming junk, right? Yep. They're, they're, you're not very confident they're going to pay you back. And sadly, and you said this, it shouldn't be surprising, right, Kirk? Right now, corporations, we t- everyone talks about debt, individual debt. We all are in debt. Corporations right now own an aggregate $10 trillion of debt. And when they're not doing really good – when they're not selling and people aren't buying their products and they have to pay those interest rates back from that debt, they're, when they're not able to pay it as well, they get downgraded. Think of a company named Ford, right? Yep. Pretty good company is now a junk bond, right? Yep. Or Illinois. Or Illinois. Or, or Kraft Food. I mean, there's – so the, here's the problem. Because corporations were so highly leveraged, because they had so much debt, when this economy got hit so hard, all these really great companies have been downgraded because they're not able – to pay that debt like they used to. And the problem is, if you own a bond fund that has some of these companies, J.C. Penney, for example, yep. they're never going to pay you back and you lose money. Well, Paul, there's a bigger problem because you nailed it. Because you, you brought it back to the bond fund. I'm glad you did because here's the thing. There's a term in our industry called throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? The baby with the bathwater. In other words, you've got good companies – that may have a lot of debt on their balance sheets, but these are good, strong companies. They're not going anywhere, but because of the amount of debt they have, maybe they're having trouble servicing or paying that debt right now, that they get downgraded. But they're a good company. We still think they're one of those really good, likely to pay back friends, right? Unfortunately, the bond fund managers, the people managing your bond funds that you own, they aren't given a choice to say, well, I think... Paul is going to pay me back. So I'm going to keep that bond in my bond fund. They don't have that choice because, remember, they have parameters, rules that they have to invest by with the bond fund that is disclosed to you through a prospectus. So once that downgrade occurs, no, now they no longer can own that bond, that, that money, and now they're forced to sell it. Now, now they're forced to sell it after a downgrade. So do you think the value of the bond that they're selling now, that they're being forced to sell, is more or less? Well, it's less because they've been downgraded. Even though they're a good company and likely to pay back, you're, because you own your bonds in a bond fund, you've lost all control. And now you are 
baby with the bathwater. Now you are losing because others are having challenges and because you have it in a bond fund, they have no choice. I hope that makes yeah, no, sense. No, that's making it total sense. And, and it really goes back to the analogy that it, it, in terms of friends. So that good friend that now has been downgraded, no one wants that friend anymore. Right. Right. So you go to try to sell that friend. No one wants it. So you have to sell it at a discount. Right? right. And And all of a sudden you're losing your money. And, and, and here's the thing. Listeners may be thinking, okay, but how, how big is this downgrade issue? Right now, there are two corporations, two publicly traded companies in the S&P that are AAA, the best friends possible. That's incredible. Two. That's incredible. I mean, think about that. Paul, I mean, quickly tell me how many are being downgraded right now and how does it compare to the financial crisis? So right now, they estimate about 100 companies are going to end up being in junk status. In junk, the, high junk, yield. Junk, high yield. In the Great Recession, 82 so people think of the Great Recession as a bad time. Right now, corporations are really in trouble. So, and part of it is, again, going back to they were so highly in debt going into this. Well, I want to talk about next segment, people getting and corporations getting over their skis, how the Fed's going to impact them. Stick through to the next segment because this next segment is going to explain a lot about what's going on right now and some of the things we can do to prevent making these mistakes and building a retirement plan. So Register for one of our seven-hour courses at all the universities. We are now doing small groups and live streaming them. It's $29 to attend. Ch tuition goes to charity. If you'd like to register for our seven-hour course, you need to go to retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. Much more with Kirk and Paul right after this. Happy you're with us here on the Retirement Education Hour. If you're on Facebook, you can find out more about Kirk and Paul at the Retirement Education Foundation. Just search for that on Facebook, like the page, and you'll be clued into what they've been up to, what they're doing, and more information on how you can get ready for retirement. Again, just search for Retirement Education Foundation on Facebook. We're talking about bonds today here on the program. Kirk and Paul, you mentioned the Fed. What do we need to know about the Fed when it comes to bonds? Well, there's so much to, well, first, don't ever fight the Fed. Come back to me in 10 years, and if you follow that wisdom, you will have done well in the markets. Don't fight the Fed. But we have a really interesting dynamic happening right now. We're having downgrades of, as Paul mentioned, coming out of the last segment, of good, strong companies, and then some a little skeptical, you know, not great credit quality companies that are now junk, high yield status. So everyone's getting downgraded. The challenge is, is people trying to service all this debt we have. Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have more leverage now than we've ever had. Is that that's true? By 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 a lot. By a right? lot, yeah. And I don't think that the behavior of the Fed now is going to reduce that in any fashion. And and we're not here to. I understand the action of Fed. I, I get these are extraordinary times, and, and, and they are. But it's perverting the markets, Paul, because what the Fed is basically saying right now is we won't let anyone fail. Right. Right. right, right. Not even – they're buying high yield, Paul. Right, I mean, right. in my lifetime, I'd never so, thought I'd see this. But they're basically saying we're not going to let anyone fail. So when you give companies, municipalities, whatever it is, this license to say – I'm not going to let you fail. When you say that, aren't they more likely to take on more risk? Well, sure they will. They'll have to because others will. And to stay competitive, that means they're going to have to take on more, more leverage. They're going to borrow more money, right? Knowing the Fed will always come in to save the day every time we have an extraordinary event. Well, what defined that extraordinary event, right? So too big to fail when we got five companies that represent 20% of the S&P 500, Paul? You're going to let one of those fail right now? No way. So, so the point is, is that things are mispriced right now. I've, I know that right now, Paul, 50% of all people who are renting retail space last month, 50% of all tenants that are renting real t retail space did not pay rent last month. 50%. For Barron's, this delay is not going to last forever. Yeah, at some point, whether it's rent or student loans, at some point, people are going to have to start paying back. And well, what mortgages. And what's going to happen 
when people with unemployment at 44 million, 44 million people, how, how are they going to do this? And uh, yeah, you're, you're, I mean, is the, is our government going to bail this forever? Well, that's the, that's I mean, the when does it stop? Debate. That's the great debate. And, and here's the question. Do you invest in the bonds or do you invest in the equities? And, 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 and please be clear. This segment is specifically talking about bonds and I'm not, I know that there are some experts out there saying the 60-40 playbook's dead. They want you to go 75% equities, 80% equities. By no means are we suggesting you should take on more stock risk. We're not suggesting that. We're just telling you that bonds are tricky. Utilization of bonds in a retirement plan need to be more strategic than just a bond fund. But probably more important than what percentage you have in stocks versus bonds is when I'm taking income from which investment at what time and tax efficiency, that's what's going to drive your performance. So I get really concerned because people are going to take away from this is I'm not going to, I'm just going to own more stocks. And candidly, if I was listening to me, that's probably what I would do because if the Fed is going to bail everybody out, well, then why not own the stock? And if the Fed keeps pump printing money, what will that create? Some sort of inflation at some point. If we have inflation, that means interest rates go up. Interest rates are going to have to go up over the next 20 years. And the last place you want to be if interest rates are going up is owning bonds. Right. So, so I think you, you set that up, which is so then, you know, I'm listening to this. I'm glad you brought this up because I think many people listening could easily take away from this. Great. Well, then I'll just own 80 percent bonds, not 60 percent bonds. You mean 80 percent stocks. 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 Thank you. 80 percent stocks, not 60 if bonds are so risky, and, and that's not at all what we're saying. So then the listen, listeners are thinking, okay, then what do I do? What are you saying? What, I, so what are you saying? And this is honestly, the, I mean, part of the challenge is you have, we have eight minutes, right? At the end of the day, there's only so much we can talk about in an eight-minute segment. I mean, this is where the class becomes so important because we talk a lot about what are the ways to handle it. But the most important thing is we always talk about sequence of return risk, and that's sort of what you're alluding to, right? At the end of the day, it, it's not about equities. It's not about bonds. It's not about investments. It's really about making sure you never, ever are forced to sell from your investments at the wrong time. It's about having control over when you want to sell them. It is. And when you own a bond fund, you have zero, zero control. control of what's being bought and sold. You think you're controlling because you don't sell your bond fund. But you go look at your turnover ratio of your bond fund. Go look at the turnover ratio of your bond fund, and you're going to – two things I want people to look at. We didn't even talk about that. No. Fees. Want, oh. Well, forget fees. I mean, fees – bond funds, guys, are so expensive. Your net expense ratio isn't, isn't close to all the fees you're paying. So you, you, you just – you got to be super – you know, I, I, I'm worried people are going to go out and run at, and buy equities. It's how and what you buy when you're taking income. And let's dedicate next segment to what is the solution to creating income in retirement. How do you properly allocate? And it's less about the investments. Like we keep telling you week after week after week, it's not the investments. that's the easiest part. It's the income planning is the most important part. And maybe we should talk about that next segment. That's a great idea. So let's talk about the class. So every segment we talk about the class, but, you know, what is it? It is a seven-hour course, ultimately, that teaches people how to build a retirement plan. And, and I know the average listener is thinking, well, I have a retirement plan. Trust me, uh, only 4% of you actually have a real plan, okay? So if you come to the class, you're going to see what a real plan looks like, okay? But the purpose of the class is to teach you how to build a retirement plan or to help you find someone who really will do it for you. And we talk about investments and bonds and income planning and legacy planning, Tax. taxes, and because taxes are a huge part of doing a true plan. We invite you to come to a class. It's $29. Invest in your retirement. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. You go on the website. You're going to read about the instructors. You're going to see the topics that we teach. It's $29 to attend. We teach them at all the major lo- uh, universities, but we're also live streaming them as well. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. You can register online or call 800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. And when you call, you can register uh, when you t- talk to the representative. Easy as that. We have much more right here on the Retirement Education Hour after this.
Happy to be alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler with the Retirement Education Foundation. Be sure to like their page on Facebook. Search for Retirement Education Foundation to learn a whole lot more. We're glad to have you aboard for our discussion today about bonds and how that fits in to your plan for retirement. I hear a lot about something called sequence of return risk. What is that? Why is it so significant with bond funds, Kirk and Paul? I think it's it's just sequence of return risk is the greatest risk to every listener's retirement plan. I mean, we have 10,000 baby boomers retiring a day, Paul. And it's remarkable to me the little that people discuss this risk. Our industry, certainly, it's a secret. They don't want you to even know there's a risk. It is the number one risk to every person's retirement plan. And whether it's bonds, equities, it, it's just a retirement risk. It, it's not specific to bonds. But before we do that, I got to really quickly give you the last risk about bonds because I feel like we've missed out on something called duration risk. Here's the typical, typically when you own a long-term bond, if interest rates rise 1%, the value of that bond fund is going to go down 10%. So if you own a long-term bond fund, if interest rates rise 1%, your bond fund will go down 10%. And we're at the lowest interest rate environment ever. So if you are in the camp that we're eventually going to see interest rates rise, understand that's the general rule. The way you can look for your own bond fund, if you own it, you can actually look at turnover ratio, which is how many times things are being bought and sold. The higher the turnover ratio, the more expensive the fund is going to be. You can look at something called duration risk. And if you find duration risk and whatever that number is, for every 1% interest rates go up, that's how much your bond fund's going to go down. So if your duration risk is six, that means if interest rates go up one, percent, your bond fund is going to go down 6%. Now, Paul, I'm hugely oversimplifying this, but without a seven-hour course to teach in a few minutes, I, I just wanted to give them some tools to look at what they've got. Right, right. Let's let's talk about sequence of return, which is, is the biggest risk to a retirement plan is if you take income out of accounts that are down, the chances of you recovering are significantly less. And here's a statistic. If you have a market event or a life event in the first five years of your retirement, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. And the easiest way I can explain this is if the market is down, if your portfolio is down 50% the first year and then goes up 50% the second year, you have an average rate of return of zero, but your portfolio lost 25%. See, once you lose money, you need a greater percentage to recover from. So this is unlike any other time in your life. Before, markets go up, go down, not as impactful. But once markets start going down, once you retire, and then you're taking a withdrawal out of it, you are locking in those losses. You have fewer shares. So when it recovers, it takes that much more to recover to get back to even. And you've got no shot because every year you're going to have to take money out. You don't have a delay. So knowing to take money from accounts that don't have volatility strategically is going to be the key to performance and whether you outlive your money and how well your portfolio performs over a long period of time. So, Kirk, what if I just don't want to take money out? I mean, you're making this suggestion that, you know, this happens when you sell when the market's down. What if I what if I choose not to sell? Well, once you turn 72 years old, you don't have a choice because what? you have something called required minimum distributions. Whether you want to take money out of your investments or not, the IRS says you must take out money at about 4% and it goes up. So by the time you're 80 years old, you have to take out 6% a year. So the next question, Paul, I know you're going to ask me is, well, why can't I just re... And after I take the money out, why can't I just put it back in the market? That was my next question. Well... You can do that after, A, you've locked in those losses and you pay 30% or so to taxes, Fed and state. That's a bad recipe. That's a mistake. You, you know you're going to have to take money out to either live on or because the IRS says you have to. So the key to what is going to drive your performance isn't going to be the investments. I can show you how you can have an average 10% rate of return over 20 years and you only take out 5% a year to live on and you outlive your money in 17 years. 
I can show you how two different people retire one year apart from each other and invested in the same investment for 30 years. I can show you over a 30-year period. The only difference is one retired one year earlier. The one that retired one year earlier outlives their money at 84 years old. The other one still has $1.2 million when they're 96 years old. It's one year difference. It's what happens early in your retirement. See, it's not the mutual fund you choose or the investment you buy or the stock you pick or the market timing you have that's going to drive your performance. It's when you're taking your income from the right places to minimize this risk, the sequence of return risk. So this is, this brings us back to the bond su- subject, right? Because for years, people have been told, well, just put money in bonds and those aren't volatile, right? Bonds yeah. are a safe haven. No. That's the purpose of this show. Yeah, That's look- why this was so important. Bonds are just as volatile and have been just as volatile as equities over the last three years. I would encourage you to go back to the first quarter of 2018 and look at how your bond portfolios were doing or look in the fourth quarter of 2018. Look at December specifically and see how your stocks and your bonds performed identically. I mean, way down. I would encourage you to look at this your bond funds. I don't care what you see on TV and how bonds are performing. I want you to look at your bond funds during this COVID crisis and see when the equities went down, what happened to your bond funds. They got crushed and they're going to. So invest seven hours of your time, spend $29, donate $29 to charity. That's what tuition is. And it goes to charity and learn how to build yourself a retirement plan. What drives performance is the plan drives performance. Spend seven hours, 200-page textbook. We teach these courses at all the major universities, and we are streaming these live every two weeks now and doing small groups now. Invest in your retirement and attend retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. All matters discussed during this show are for informational purposes only. Opinions expressed are solely those of senior planning advisors and staff. All topics covered are believed to be from reliable sources. However, Senior Planning Advisors makes no representations as to its accuracy or completeness. This shall in no way be construed as a solicitation to sell securities or investment advisory services to residents of any state other than Michigan or where otherwise permitted. Topics should be discussed with your individual advisor prior to implementation. Fee-based financial planning and investment advisory services offered through Strategic Investment Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Strategic Investment Advisors and Senior Planning Advisors are affiliated companies. This radio show is a paid placement.